Something strange is growing in my vivarium. A white extraterrestrial force is festering in the shadows. What is it and where does it come from? And most importantly, will it cause our friends inside any harm? Stay tuned to the end of the video to find out more about this mysterious organism. This video is sponsored by the one and only Ant Keeping Depot, and I wish you welcome to another Vivarium update. And there goes the dramatical introduction of the video. And let's start it by doing something new, going through the aquatic changes that has occurred since the last episodes. They have been quite monumental. So let's begin outside the vivarium. I have always been enchanted by these magic tadpole gatherings around my summer place. Tadpoles is the larval stage of an amphibian organism, in this case probably a toad. All those black little swimming bodies there. There are literally thousands of them and I planned on getting some of them in the vivarium. And you won't believe what happened, that's for another episode. The reason though for them to be this many is that tadpoles have a very low survival rate. Therefore the species of toad lays thousands of them with the hope of that a few make it to adulthood. But yeah, I found that two of these guys would be a perfect addition to the vivarium. If you want to do the same, please only pick a few and only if there is like plenty of them. As you can see, there is also a bunch of fish here and they also have a similar way of reproducing. So I got five of these small juvenile fishies. Not those larger ones though, that are really hunting them down. Check out this one. Oh yeah, time to get you out of there, man. Here we go. Focus. Speed. I am speed. I also got some aquatic fauna and brought them to their new home, hoping they would prosper. At first the water was murky and dim, but a new cohort of introduced organisms already started to forage these new grounds. I plan on making a food web out of the aquatic environment, just like the terrestrial one in a previous video. And who knows, maybe we can even connect them. I have already seen terrestrial species actually daring to venture into this bubbly and amphibious part of the vivarium. Let me know when you see one of these terrestrial invaders. Not yet. Where is he? <gasps> I see him! Do you see him? There we go. That's an isopod. <laughs> oh my god. A pill bug wandering in the depths of the pond, slowly grinding its ass on the fish's local property. I honestly have no idea what he or she is doing in there. And any suggestions in the comments from you guys? Even Armadillium vulgare isopods oftentimes venture out on the water doing this kind of stuff. Often to their own peril, as they aren't as used to this environment as other isopod species. This is also a great source of food for the aquatic inhabitants. Look at all those fishies eating them. Food is also provided from other sources, such as the constant flow of water that comes from the waterfall that brings with it fresh nutrients from the surrounding dirt and plants. Just like the rivers that enriches the sea with the goodest from the continents, this waterfall provides this pond with the goodest from this bioactive hill. Not to mention that in return, predators from the land often hunt this aquatic population when they can. I personally enjoy watching the smaller fauna as well, such as these small springtails here jumping in the waterfall. Cute, isn't it? <laughs> Furthermore, organisms of this size are peculiar and quite interesting, such as these guys that strictly feeds on this strange fungi, I think. Or at least, yeah, I suppose. Mold and shrooms are prevalent all over this vivarium and I have really been keen on documenting their growth. But some of them just grow so slowly. 
Have a look at this six day time lapse of these yellow ones growing in the trunk. They barely moved. But then, all of a sudden that all changed as this amazing organism introduced itself to us. This white blob of smushiness is a slime mold. I think it is the species of Stemonitis fusca sprangia, I think, I don't know. But as usual, correct me if I'm wrong. And oh boy, these guys are so cool. I will provide you with some facts as you see it prospering here. These guys evolved literally 700 million to 1 billion years ago and have a very interesting binary life cycle. The first cycle is the most mobile one, the feeding phase, which is the one you can see now. In this case, they will eat any microorganisms such as bacteria, yeast or fungi and according to some sources also dead vegetation and other nutritious substances. As you could see, this slime mold is very mobile, probably eating something on this log. But sooner or later, it will harden and reach the more static, reproductive phase. Here they will send out haploid cells that will find other counterparts and create more slime molds. Fascinating business, in it. Cooler even is that I found out that these guys provide food for ants, slugs, snails and other organisms that we have in this tank. Some beetle species were even specialized on slime mold feeding. Here comes a final time lapse of another slime mold that I found in another part of the vivarium. Here you can once again see how it starts in the feeding phase and finishes up in the reproductive phase. Gosh, I hope I'm right about this. Anyways, thank you for watching and please have a fantastic day and I will see you in a future update. Bye bye!